Main Street bound seven local train. Beautiful shot. Looks like a Michael Mann movie. Yeah. Oh, it does. Looks look like you're in heat right uh, now, Connor. Uh, shot of heat, kind of, right? Heat, you said? Heat, yeah. I saw that in the theaters and I haven't seen it since. I saw, it, I saw the movie Heat four times in the movie theater. Wow. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen another movie four times in a movie theater. Oh, you're heat. Not, heat. Not the Heat, not the Sun, not the Katie Dippold written one. No, heat with, heat with Robert De Niro. Yeah. And Val Kilmer, right? And Val Kilmer and. and, and uh, yeah, so I didn't get it, it was like two and a half hours. I would have been, I think, 20. Came out in, in, in uh, uh, 95, right? Yeah. Uh, came out within like a month of Casino coming out. And everyone yeah, was so excited. We don't need this on camera. <laughs> yeah, we do. Really? Yeah. It's a heartwarming story. I've heard it before. It gets I'm to really a good again. spot. Um, in, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you cut the camera, but I made you put the camera back on for this because this is real. All right. Um, the movie Heat came out right when I was getting ready to go to England for drama school in, uh, at the end of 95. So I saw it like a month before I had to move to England. And I was really scared of moving to England. It was like, I had been nervous about going to college. I'd gone to college for two years in uh, Columbia, Missouri, which is like a half hour drive from my house that I grew up, that, uh, in Jefferson City, Missouri. And now all of a sudden I found myself in a situation where I was moving to England and uh, he got released. Like I moved there in January, 1996 and he, came out in, in cinemas there like right in January and I went and saw it three times uh, over the course of that first like month that I was there partly because I love the movie so much but partly because it specifically sensorily brought me like, it felt like I was back at home because I had just been home back in America watching that movie so the, the whole sense experience put me back it made me not feel homesick to see that movie but I also loved it. Like I also just, and I think the fourth time I saw it, and I've seen it tons on video, DVD, and TV since then. I've seen it other times. I haven't gotten, I would love to see it in the theater again. But uh, the fourth time I saw it in the theater was when I realized, I started, it was the only time I'd seen a movie so many times in a theater that I started analyzing it. Like I wasn't as emotionally participating in it. I was thinking about like, oh, this movie structure is like this. And you know that movie, you know what the structure of that movie is? No. I think most people probably feel like it's got so many characters and so many tangents that it, it's all over the place, you know? Like a shortcut type movie? Yeah. Because you've got not just Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, but you've got their uh, wives and, and love interests, you've got their uh, uh, partners uh, the, in crime, partners on the police force, there's like the... Um, the driver uh, who's on parole, they bring back into doing crime. The, the structure of that movie, though, is it takes seven days. Yeah. That movie is, it's... It's one week. It's one week. So, spoiler, you're basically watching the last seven days of his life. We got a beep there. Yeah, one of the characters dies at the end. Character of played by... The structure of the movie is it's the last week of his life, and you see every day and every night of that seven days. We go now. <laughs> Boring. Rob wasn't. Rob wasn't. Rob wasn't bored by that. No, because his camera angles were phenomenal. But you also weren't bored by the content. Of no, I like the content. Well, then, what, were Keith, what's wrong with you? I mean, you, I guess you really have had a bad year because that response is indicative of someone who's not happy with their, <laughs> where their life is. What do you mean? Uh, I don't know, I just turned around like, we're talking about a movie that like kids haven't seen. Well, they can see it. That's the good news, they can see it. You just spoil the whole movie no, for them. No, but you bleep we that part. It out. Well, <laughs> what if I don't? Rob will, if you don't, Rob will. Yeah, Rob's my firewall against your shenanigans. Also, I can't wait to, to, to break some copyright laws and cut the Al Pacino thing. She's got a great ass throughout that speech. Here she got a great ass! request you cut to? is the part where he, uh... And you got your head goes in, all the way up it! You know the place where he's here, he goes, Come here, watch your cup! Come here, watch your cup! Yeah. Um, you know the part I'm talking about, right? Yeah, where they're in the place, like yeah, the place with the bird. Give me all you got! This is Give me all you got! 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 I mean, that movie is the most fun Pacino performance, I think, in terms of just, yeah. like, pure playfulness on his part.
By the time listen, I get listen, to man, Phoenix, I swear, I swear, man, tonight's the best be I can rising. do for you. He'll probably leave a note right on the door. It was, uh, I saw that around Christmas last year at BAM. Uh huh. It was really fun watching it with an audience. Oh, um, I would have loved to have seen that. Let me know if it ever shows. I again. will. Yeah. Don't waste my motherfucking time.